Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, so this is a, a recording that we're creating today for those of you that are potentially interested in the National Graduate Leadership Programme, which is um, facilitated by police now. Um, so I'm delighted to be welcome today with um, I'm joined by Annie too, who is basically a marketing officer at Police Now, and Annie's given her very precious time up to talk to us a little bit more about Police Now's National Graduate Leadership Program, and also answer some of the questions um, that we hear quite a lot of students have, and hopefully be able to provide a little bit more insight into some of the the details of the the program as well. And um, so, thank you, Annie, so much for um, joining us this morning. And giving your time um, to students at Edge Hill. Thank so, you for having us. Sorry. Oh no, you're fat. You're more than welcome. Thank you. Um, so just I know a lot of students are very keen and, and kind of you know we're aware of police now, but for those that don't know, could you just kind of tell us a little bit about who are police now, and then just a very brief overview of the National Graduate Leadership Program and what it actually is. Oh, so hi everyone. Um, so Police Now is, we're basically a charity organisation. We work in partnership with police forces across England and Wales. Uh, we attract, recruit, train and develop graduates into policing. Um, more specifically, Police Now exists to increase diversity in policing, um, focusing on underrepresented groups um, in policing, such as uh, females and ethnic minority groups, um, so Black, Asian, ethnic minority groups. Um, and we do this through two programs. So that's our National Graduate Leadership Program and our National Detective Program. Um, we're currently recruiting for our National Graduate Leadership Program, and this uh, program focuses on neighborhood policing. Um, it's a lot more community focused. It's about collaborating with various parties to kind of tackle long term um, issues in the community. And um, yeah, it's a two, two year program that is fully funded and salaried. Brilliant. Oh, that sounds amazing. And just a couple of questions, I suppose, following on from bits she said there. So if you're a student that doesn't feel that they're within a minority group, can you still apply for the programme as well? Oh, yeah, no, 100 percent. Um, it's just yeah. police now kind of started up to um, as as a focus to bring in more. Um, it's, it's not really just about like uh, visible diversity, which people mm -hmm. um, tend to think it's mm -hmm. about, um, you know, diversity of thought. Um, mm -hmm. So bring in bringing in people that have um you know different skills different backgrounds that's why we don't look at um specific subject degrees when we're kind mm -hmm. of um recruiting uh mm -hmm. because yeah it diversity not only visible but diversity of thought yeah no that's amazing that's really great that's fantastic thank you for clarifying that and you said you kind of open now for applications and when does that application window close um, so we are currently recruiting until the 8th of February. Um, I would definitely advise to kind of um, get in, get applications in as soon as you can, just because during this period specifically, so Christmas, New Year's, um, we usually see a spike in applications. Um, and when candidates go to apply, they need to choose like their preferred force um, that they okay. want to work for that we're currently partnered with. Um, and these will close um, as soon as they fill up. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'd definitely say get your applications in as soon as possible. Brilliant, okay, that's fantastic. And you've already mentioned that you're open to any degree, which is brilliant. And um, when you're kind of looking at those applications as well, obviously, you know, you're recruiting graduates, so, you know, they're gonna be, have, they've got degrees or gonna get in a degree. Is there any particular experience that you would like? So when you are shortlisting candidates coming through, is there any particular experience that you think that they should have or you would kind of is desirable at that stage? Um, experience, no. Um, like, if anything, we ask you to kind of, well, we don't really ask. We just kind of think more successful candidates usually show certain skills. Um, okay. For example, um, you know, they they have really good problem solving skills, negotiation skills, decision making skills. Um, they tend to be resilient, eager, mm -hmm. um, motivated. Um, they want to make real a, di a real difference in policing. Um, okay. They really kind of align with our mission. So again, we don't we don't look at specific experience. Of course, it'd be good um, if you have experience, you know, um, because with 
any type of experience, customer service, it could be accounting, it could be anything at all. But mm. if you're in a work environment, you can you tend to pick up skills. But mm. if you don't, it's fine as well, because in university, you pick up skills with, you know, prioritizing deadlines and problem solving and negotiating. And, you know, all of these skills you don't ne- necessarily need from a workplace, but um, can get it from university as well. Brilliant. And they just have to be able to demonstrate that then within the application and recruitment process. Really, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and I suppose in terms of that process, what just a top line, what does the application process look like? Um, so our recruitment process is four stages. Um, it starts with an initial application form. Mm-hmm. Uh, the end the initial application form is basically just um, checking that you're eligible for the program. So we'll mm-hmm. go through personal details um, and eligibility, such as, um, you know, your financial position, um, age, qualification, um, just very basic stuff um, to kind of see if you're eligible. Then if you are, you're passed in passed on to um, the online assessment stage, uh, mm-hmm. which is basically... I won't go into too much detail. I don't want to give everything away. Um, But it's basically, it's I think it's around 60 minutes, maybe. Um, Around about 60 minutes. Um, But it's, of course, up to the candidate how long they take to complete it. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's online. It's, I think it's two parts. So like a scenario-based questions and Mm -hmm. then a personality questionnaire. Um, so yeah that is the online assessment and then at the assessment center if you're successful with the online assessment you're um, moved into the assessment center stage where you um basically you sit you you're invited to it's it's all digital so at the moment I don't know if we're going back to -to face-to-face but it is currently um digital um it's a am or pm session so you don't have to do the full day i think students kind of worry that oh if the assessment center is a whole day no it's just um either the am or pm session um it's very very immersive um it's basically there's a number of different things that you do there again i don't want to give everything away but there will be like an interview um there will be role play um and there will be um some team team collaboration assessment Mm -hmm. um so it's called like a neighborhood team meeting um but again going back to experience and stuff we don't expect you to take the online assessment or the assessment center with any knowledge in policing we kind of want you want you to bring those kind of skills that you have those problem Mm -hmm. solving decision making negotiating um all those skills to the assessments Mm -hmm. um and yeah so after the assessment center stage if you're successful with that is onboarding we Mm -hmm. kind of add this in the recruitment process because after the assessment center you're given a conditional offer and the conditions are on are based on like vetting and background checks and stuff so once you pass all those that's when you kind of get your uh final offer um but yeah sounded I feel like I waffled on there but hopefully that makes sense that's really insightful that's brilliant and I think that's sometimes when students are thinking about applying you know it's that the unknown isn't it of what's coming next so I think just to have that overview and say this was is what would happen is just really really helpful and and when we're kind of working with students talk to them about particular interview technique um we tend to talk to them about kind of like using the star method so the situation task action result usually when you know they're asked competency-based interview questions is that something that you you think would work well as well in your interview so if they kind of structured it as in this is my situation this is what I did this is the outcome of that scenario do you think that would help in an interview? I think it helps um, just because uh, the interview that I mentioned at the assessment centre I think when it comes to when the interviewer is asking um, the candidates a question, um, I think some candidates tend to they either say too little or kind of say too much. Um, And we want them to kind of I think the star technique would really make it clear and concise for the interviewer. Um, So definitely, I think use the star technique. I think it's a useful way to structure responses. Um, But we also encourage applicants to kind of go onto our website and read our competencies and values um, and kind of think to help them prepare. I think 
um, it'd be good to kind of look at those competencies and values and think of ways on how they've displayed these in the past um, and then yeah use the star technique to kind of think about how they might respond um, yeah, but also I wanted to add um, which I forgot to mention um, is basically with our assessments um, our assessment centres it actually is it's a way to kind of let candidates experience what a day in the life of a neighbourhood police officer is like okay. um, so the online assessment is a week I think yeah it's a week so mm -hmm. The scenario based questions is like across a week so it's they get to experience what it'd be like on a roll mm -hmm. at the assessment center it's a day in life so it's not only us assessing the candidates but the assess the candidates are able to kind of judge for themselves if the role is right for them um yes. so yeah that's just what i wanted to add yeah no that's really important isn't it it's a bit of a two-way thing especially when you're going into a yeah. role such as policing you know yeah, it is, definitely. like you say you've got to have those skills it's got to fit with you hasn't it and it's got to feel right for you as well so it's definitely worth doing research like you say go on the website do research and see if it aligns to kind of what the student is looking for really yeah fabulous brilliant okay so when you talk about applying as well you were saying about you can you can put in like your preferred kind of police force uh mm -hmm. dependent on kind of what's available um do you kind of just get kind of like one option or is there a multiple and you put them in an order of preference do you know or um so on our application form you are given two options mm -hmm. um so first preference second second preference mm -hmm. um so yeah you will basically will definitely try and work towards your first preference mm -hmm. um but if there is if it's the case that it does get full by the time that you know you reach the conditional offer stage mm -hmm. we would then say sorry um you know it's full now we kind of have to offer you your second option okay. um so yeah yeah and that's usually okay then I'm guessing usually out of the two options most people would tend to get one of them if they're going to be offered yeah yeah definitely I I think yeah I think I've, I I don't even think I've seen um somebody been offered like you know a whole other force that's yeah. outside of their preference so yeah I think just think about your two preferences and yeah you should be fine brilliant oh that's perfect thank you um so you kind of covered off one of my questions was kind of you know who's the program suited to and you've kind of covered that off with some of the skills that you're, you're looking for really um I suppose thinking about those that then go into policing then what's the percentage rate would you say of those that then complete the program and then remain in policing um so a lot of our participants actually remain in policing I think it's like around about 89 percent um that remain in policing um but that 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 also basically our program you can either stay within neighborhood policing or go into other units within policing you could go into you know detectives if you wanted to mm -hmm. um so yeah 89 percent um about 57 of our alumni have um achieved a promotion to sergeant um and then about 25 um has kind of uh gained a place on the fast track um program which enables progression to the rank of inspector uh, within two years um, so yeah a lot of it a lot of our participants do kind of look for promotion um, after the two years and we are fully there to kind of support our participants even though they've finished their two years on our program um, yeah. so yeah Brilliant. That's really good and good to know those long term prospects are there and people are doing quite well after the programme as well. That's brilliant. Um, if kind of during the during or after the programme, a student kind of is thinking, oh, do you know what? I'm not sure if this is for me. Um, is there something else that they can explore, do you know, within the police force that they're based in or within police now? Or what, what would happen in that scenario usually? Um, the good thing is, on the second year of the program, uh, participants are given um, an, an opportunity to do a secondment or an attachment. Um, so it's basically four weeks away from their neighbourhood policing role. Um, so the secondment uh, side of things, you could, you know, end up in National Crime Agency, uh, mm -hmm. work with the Home Office for four weeks. Um, it's completely up to the participant. Um, with the attachments piece, uh, participants can kind of go away to another unit. Um, so like 
uh, as I mentioned, like the detectives, so criminal investigations department, um, so that they can, the, the idea is for participants to go away for four weeks, bring back skills um, mm -hmm. or learn new skills um, uh, and they can bring it back to their neighborhood policing role or just kind of like just for their own professional development. Yeah. Um, but yeah, within that time, if if participants feel that actually I enjoy detectives, mm -hmm. um, then, you know, they can go for that. Um, if they find that actually the secondment that I did, I preferred that, then, um, you know, completely they can do that too. But they do have to complete the program. Um, what did, you know, they tend to complete the program and then they think about their options afterwards yeah. they don't have yeah. to stay in um neighborhood policing um yeah. if they don't want to yeah okay that's brilliant lovely and is is there anything kind of like you know where uh, practical where do they need to be able to drive is that an essential criteria no it's not essential so okay. um as we do work with um you know many many forces um some of them do require um candidates to have a driving license um a full driving license full uk driving license um so that would mainly be the major like main city forces such as like uh, the metropolitan police mm -hmm. uh, greater manchester police um so yeah they they tend to look for a driving license but not not all i think the best thing to advise here would be to look at our website for our force uh, specific eligibility criteria Oh, brilliant. Okay, so that's yeah. all on there. That's yeah. That's really helpful. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Um, and then thinking about, you know, the the program and how they're assessed. So how does that that two years work? Do they have kind of formal points in the program where they're like reviewed or assessed to kind of see how they're getting on and how they're performing? And how does that, and then are they kind of like signed off at the end? Say that again, sorry, Kate. So you, throughout the programme, do the students have kind of like formal assessment points? So like where their performance is reviewed um, and, you know, they kind of then measured and signed off at the end. Um, yeah, so throughout the two year programme, um, their development and performance is kind of measured in a variety of ways. Um, it's there will be the graduate diploma in poli professional police in practice. Um, which they will be working towards throughout the two years. Um, it combines the policing evidence base with operational work. Um, so they'll be measured through that, um, as well as impact events, um, which is basically events that where all participants kind of come together and um, present what impact they've made. Mm -hmm. um, and then also um, completing the operational competence portfolio, um, mm. which will basically assess the participants against a range of um, critical policing skills. Brilliant. So they are working towards a formal qualification then yes. as well. Yeah, Brilliant. that's okay. the graduate um, graduate diploma. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, that's great. That's really great. So that's kind of like a lot of the questions I wanted to go through, but I suppose for those then have kind of thought oh this sounds brilliant and perfect for me and they want to find out more what would you say the next thing to do would be Annie is, is do you want to kind of just shout out your website so that people are really clear about where to go as well and what to do next yeah so I would definitely say um go to our website policenow.org.uk um definitely read about police now and our mission what we're trying mm -hmm. to achieve and how you might you know be able to contribute towards that um as a neighborhood police officer um again our competencies and values um definitely read through those think about what you've done in at your time in university or um in your previous workplace um and how you you know how you might be able to showcase these if you do get to the assessment center um but again apply as soon as you can um you know we hate to hear when applicants are you know too late to um you know apply for their preferred force um and they're the next available force is like miles away from where they want to kind of yeah. stay um but having said that people do relocate so yeah. um you know, the forces offer different salaries. Um, the Metropolitan Police currently offers the highest. It's about 33,717 mm -hmm. um, per year. So, um, yeah, definitely have a look. Look at all the different force pages. Um, yeah, and yeah, apply as soon as you can. 
Brilliant. And if if anybody misses it this time, but you know, because we, we keep in touch with our graduates as well, and they want to go for it, you know, next time, when would that window open then for applications usually? So we tend to open during autumn period. Um, mm -hmm. We don't have a set date every year. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's around about the autumn period, September, October times when students mm -hmm. go back to university. Yeah. Um, and then we tend to close around about this time, January, February time. Brilliant, that's perfect. And another kind of so final question that I did think of is, is, is that students kind of have an option as well. They can obviously apply to yourselves and go through the programme. They can obviously apply to police forces directly as well. And I suppose what's the the kind of what if you can say, you know, kind of really what's the key difference and, and what are the things that students should maybe consider when they're deciding whether to go down the police now route or whether to kind of apply to a force directly? Um, I think I hear a lot from our participants that they enjoy this route because, um, you know, it's you won't get the same support um, and development opportunities that you get with police now if you went direct. So, mm -hmm. um, for example, you have a performance and development coach throughout the two years that mm -hmm. help you with your professional development. Um, personal and professional development um, you know with if if you midway through the program say oh after the two years I want to focus on this or I want to go into criminal investigations um, or I'm having issues with my confidence or I want mm. to build you know my negotiating skills um, mm. like that that performance and development co coach will be there for you um, but as well as your line manager in force um, you have various kind of streams of support uh, available mm. um whereas if you went direct you'd probably just have your force um mm -hmm. but then there's also after you finish the program there's also so many different opportunities that you can kind of um have as a as a police now alumni you can get involved with so many different networking opportunities be key speaker be a key speaker at some of our big events um mm -hmm. yeah. um so yeah there's there's that but then there's also um our training is a lot more condensed so um if you apply directly you'd probably go through I don't know exactly I think it's around about 22 weeks of training whereas with us it's only seven weeks so you're learning exactly what like you're learning all the laws and legislations that you need for the role within seven weeks um yeah. compared to the 22 it's it's a lot more intense yeah. um but, you know, only the highest quality um, candidates do make it through. Um, yeah. So, yeah, um, I'm trying to think of any other differences. Uh, I think those are the main ones, the support and definitely the academy, which is a lot more condensed. Um, yeah. But, yeah. That's good to know. And cause like you say, if people learn differently, don't they as well? And some people need that extra support, would like extra support. Some people want to learn intensively. Some people think I'm going to need longer. So those things yeah. are just good to know so that students can start to make those decisions as well. Um, yeah, no, that's absolutely. brilliant. And is there anything else that you wanted to mention, Annie, that you've not had the opportunity to mention as we've gone through the questions? Um, I don't think so. I think we covered majority of it. I'm just thinking back on that driving licence question, though. I think I think I might have got some things wrong there. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll just advise definitely check our force um, eligibility yeah, criteria yeah. because I it might. sounds like it varies a little bit. Doesn't yeah, it, it does. Yeah. It does. There is. That's another thing, by the way, um, that I think candidates should probably know. There is a lot of differences with some mm. of um, our forces, um, you know, driving license being one of them, um, mm. you know, sometimes a force when you're when you're um, successful um in your application and receive a, an offer and you're kind of purchasing you know your uniform mm. um some forces require you to buy the boots some forces provide you with a boot so there is uh, there is okay. some differences um yeah. with forces I can't really think of anymore but there are because there's little things that... yeah because I think um candidates kind of forget that it is a national program so if they make mm. I don't know if they make friends with some of um the, their peers on the same um cohort you know their peer might be doing this on this week or have this already but that other participant doesn't have it and they're like why don't I have it is because they're on different with different yeah. forces um yeah. so yeah there are some differences 
Oh, that's brilliant. Lovely. Well, thank you so, so much. That's been really, really insightful. And I'm sure that, you know, loads of our students will love watching this recording, even, you know, if it's students that are going to be looking at applying next year, um, you know, because a lot of the information that you've shared will probably be, you know, still really relevant, I'm guessing. So that's been amazing. Thank you so much for all of that. I'm going to stop recording now. Um, yeah. There we go.